Alright, so welcome to the Miracles and Revelations um, gathering on day 29, I think. I hope I, I did that right. Um, and I didn't skip a day. Um, so um, it's great that you're here. Um, there's some yeah it's, it's great what we're going to read and what we're going into is really wonderful from a course in miracles it is um miracles and revelations second part so last time we were uh, looking at the levels of consciousness like the subconscious level the supramental the super super conscious level where the revelations come from but it's not really that fixed as it sounds so anyway so we continue with that today because there's so much more to discover and um, while doing that you'll see um, things are opening up in a way that you can't imagine now and that's what i love about this so thank you for being here in this in this moment um, we're going to start with a beautiful um, he has poetry, in fact, poetry of uh, Simeon, and it's it's a prayer at the same time. Simeon was in the sixth century uh, Greek um, monk and um, mystic, actually the mystic. So he has a lot of poetry, a lot of poems. I'm going to use that more because it's so beautiful. It's just say directly from his Christ mind and lovely to hear and to express. So that is what we're going to use to come into our meditation for today, into our receptiveness, into our defenselessness. And um, so there's a lot of opportunities to to um, say experience a miracle and get familiar with the idea of revelation i'm also using the book revelation in this uh, revelation 3 uh, to read parts of that um, i'll do that after the prayer that we're going to use to really become quiet and in the meantime i will uh, play a song that uh, was made last year uh, just because it has the same, to me, it has the same intensity and beauty. Even though I, uh, yeah, that came to me last year, so I share it with you now. It is actually a video, I could show that as a video too, because it's really lovely. That's also poetry, lyrical poetry. So anyway, so this is, this is great. So we're getting into the feel and the idea of revelation and so it's not something that you can turn on and off the same as a miracle it's not in the conscious control so the miracles are really like a support to the uh, revelation readiness if you want so they contribute to that and how that exactly works or how that can be uh, heard um, will be revealed too in in what i share with you and um, so starting with the quieting down uh, with a beautiful prayer in fact an like an asking for uh, experience and asking for contact it is a prayer of course this contact is already given and it's established in you you can only find it in you but at the same time you open yourself up for it by yeah say knocking on the door or and discovering that the door is already open something like that or that there is no door so more of this listen to this so it's good to breathe and relax more than anything it's like just allow yourself to be affected by it why Simeon Come, true light. Come, eternal life. Come, hidden mystery. Come, nameless treasure. Come, 
ineffable deed. Come, inconceivable person. Come, endless bliss. Come, unsetting sun. Come, untarnished crown. Come, purple of our great king and God. Come, crystal belt studded with gems. Come, unapproachable sandal. Come, royal purple and right hand of the king. Come, you whom my soul, my pulsor soul has longed for and longs for still. I give you thanks that you have become one single spirit with me. Come, true light. Come, eternal life. Come, hidden mystery. Come, nameless treasure. So I continue with the text um, that's connected to the music that I'm going to play. In you is all of heaven. Every leaf that falls is given life in you. Each bird that ever sang will sing again in you. And every flower that ever bloomed has saved its perfume and its loveliness for you.
So we keep slowing down the mind, so to speak, so that it will just almost like stand still, but it's completely open. And um, so it can fulfill its function. It's going to be the most, say, constructive presence when it's open. So all this is just preparation in that sense. And it's not that we really try to do something, but it, it comes down to to this um, slowing down of mind so that there's more space in your consciousness for for entrance. And so we, we're going to read a bit, first of all, from um, the Book of Revelations. And um, because I thought it was uh, it is great to, to use it also to express the inexpressible to to see how that happened in the Bible. Like you try to express something that you can't express. And you don't have to express it either. But in the in the book of uh, Revelation, um, it is happening. So we're reading it. We're reading from um, Revelation 3. I'm using the um, Aramaic Bible, the um, American Plain English, Prashita, Prashita, Peshita, Holy Bible, just because it's coming from the Aramaic and um, translated directly into English without first going to Greek or anything like that. So here we go. Um, the Book of Revelation, part th of uh, chapter 3. And to the messenger who is in the assembly of Sardis, write, Thus says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works and the name that you have, and that you are alive and are dying. Be vigilant and confirm what remains of those things that are ready to die, for I have not found such that your works are perfect before God. Remember how you have heard and received. Take heed and return. But if you do not wake up, I shall come upon you as a thief, and you will not know which hour I shall come upon you. But I have a few names in Sardis, those who have not defiled their garments. And they walk before me in white, and they are worthy. He who overcomes in this way is garbed with a white garment, and I shall not blot out his name from the book of life, and I shall confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit speaks to the assemblies. And to the messenger of the assembly in Philadelphia write, Thus says the Holy One, the True One, He who has the key of David, the one who opens, and there is none who shuts, and he shuts, and there is none who opens. I know your works, and behold, I have set an open door before you which no man can shut because you have a little power, and you have kept my words and have not denied my name. And behold, I grant some of the synagogue of Satan, of those who say about themselves that they are Jews, but they are not, but they are lying. Behold, I shall make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I love you because you have kept the word of my patience, I shall keep you from the trial that is going to come over the entire inhabited world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I come at once. Hold fast whatever you have, lest someone take your crown. And I will make the overcomer a pillar in the temple of God, and we, he will not go outside again, and I shall write upon him the name of my God, 
and the name of the city, the new Jerusalem, which descends from my God and my new name. Let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. So if you try to say conceptually get what is being shared, it is very difficult or it's impossible basically. And uh, if you don't know the, the symbol words that he uses in his in his uh, almost like the esoteric part of of the of the, um, the revelation then you wouldn't know what to make of it you would think it is about jerusalem it is about a certain place it is about this and that like your norm <laughs> your uh, associative human thinking is not going to help you here so if you see for instance the idea of Jerusalem as your Christ mind, as your, say, your holy mind, and then it becomes already different when you read all this. And so it is a book that is completely written with symbols, with words which are symbols too. And and so it becomes very abstract in its meaning. It It is you can feel it what it says and you can hear it what it says but it would take like a moment to to open up for that and have it literally be revealed to you so it speaks from an from out of an experience and this is this is the interesting part that's why i read this it's like that's the interesting part we can keep in mind today when listening to the miracles and revelations like we will have more miracle principles that we're going to read and there's some more description of revelation and and the limitations of the possibility to express it so i might as well just get started with that so read read some of the the uh, revelation because it's it's interesting to see what dawns when you read it and especially when when we go through this afterwards you will read it with different ears too at least that that is what i hope <laughs> so miracles and revelations i use the the book like the urtext manuscripts and so there's, uh, let me see, Miracles and Revelations starts at, I got sidetracked when reading in it. Um, so here we are on page 13 still of the uh, so Introduction to Miracles, chapter 1 from the word text. And I'm using, I'm just repeating the last, um, say, paragraph that we used last time that we were sharing about miracles and revelation so that's um, t1b 24h and it does make a lot of sense when you have the book otherwise you wouldn't know what i'm talking about it's on page 13 so revelations induce complete but temporal suspension of doubt and fear revelations induce complete but temporal suspension of doubt and fear so that's, you can also say, it, it gives you a, a whole experience of love directly, like you're directly in a love experience with the universe, with God. There's no fear, no doubt, you're total certainty, in total certainty you experience that. They represent the original form of communication between God and his souls. Before the intrusion of fire and ice made this possible, and the fire and ice I'm not going to tell you too much about, it should be noted that they involve an extremely personal sense of closeness to creation. So revelations, revelations um, involve an extremely personal close, sense of closeness to creation, which man tries to find in sexual relationships. This confusion is responsible for the depression and fear which are often associated with sex. 
So sex is often associated with lack of love, but revelation is purely a love experience. So physical closeness cannot achieve this. As was said before, the subconscious impulses properly induce miracles, which are interpersonal and result in closeness to others. This can be misunderstood by personally willful consciousness as an impulse towards sexual gratification. So we were talking about that the other day too. It's like the intensity of the feeling of connectedness with your brother becomes so intense and that you automatically, with your human associative thinking, would relate it to like this person is so special I uh, want to have sex with this person or something like that. It's like it would bring up that idea while that's not what this is about. So it was like it is a um, new um, say a new direction that you go into the in the experience with yourself where you're not going to associate it with physical closeness but with the um, closeness that comes from oneness, from love for your brother. And uh, uh, I said it the other day too, but I'll repeat that too, because it's so essential. It's like the great thing about the miracle, when you experience the miracle, say, together, if, if you want, like you experience the closeness with your brother, to see that, in that moment that it occurs, it is completely there. That's great. So that that's it. That's it too. Like that, there's no need to do anything else. So and this this is good to remember. So in fact, you can say like the, when you feel, um, and this is I know it's pretty direct when I say it like this, but when you feel like a, an impulse coming up or that could be associated with sexual closeness or physical closeness and sexual activity. In fact, um, you have an opportunity to, to go further into that without coming into action, but coming into the depth of the experience of closeness with the one that you are without touching each other, without having physical contact at all. You can do it, you know, with with so-called space between. No problem. It is, but it's good to, re to remember and to see that that's an opportunity for you to experience the miracle with your brother. So to so, so love each other for that moment that it occurs. It is a spontaneous occurrence that comes to you. You don't have to work for it or anything. No, it's like this is completely given, but it confirms the closeness with your brother, the oneness with your brother, which is so great. So then that's it, if you know what I mean. It's like it doesn't need any other steps. No, it is that experience at that time. And so... I'm I'm sharing this again because I um, I think it's essential because it it is in fact opening up a whole new way of um, uh, communicating with one another, not confusing it with any kind of relationship. It's like no, the relationship that you confirm with this is is the one that is true. Like you have you're one with your brother. So what are you talking about a relationship? You are totally related to one another. And with some you will experience the miracle and others you don't, which is perfectly all right too. There's nothing wrong with it because it's not under your conscious control. That's really important to remember too. This is not something like, okay, let's sit down and have a miracle together. <laughs> That's just not how that works. So it is not under conscious control. It literally happens to you. Yeah, so this is, this is great. I'm happy that I said this because it's, it's something that needs to open up in your mind too as a possibility. 
So it's not connected to guilt. It's not connected to body. It's not connected to sin. It's not uh, adultery. It's not none of these things. And yeah, it's not by your doing. So that's a good one too. So you're not guilty of doing it either. <laughs> because you can't do it. So that's that's great. So can you feel the freedom and the field of freedom that this occurs in? Well, this is the place I love to meet you always. You know, this is this is the place I love to meet you. And be open for the miracle, being open minded to receive the miracle and, and give it in a sense to one another. Like I offer you a miracle of peace, absolutely. And and that can then come back to me too in a joint experience. But anyway, so I'm going to read a little bit more because there's there's some characteristics in the miracle too that are essential to, to know and to discover basically to discover how natural and normal it is the absence of miracles is not natural so that's the other way around too um, let me see where are we oh yeah so the revelation is on 24 j the revelation unites souls directly with god the revelation unites souls directly with God. The miracle unites souls directly with each other, with your brother. Neither emanates from consciousness, but both are experienced in it. So consciousness was the part that you are aware of, that you are actively present. The miracle unites souls directly with each other. Neither emanates from consciousness, but both are experienced there. This is essential because consciousness is the state which produces action. Like, if you're aware of it, that produces action. Um, that's the place where action is produced. You have a will, you want to do something. You know, like that. You're inspired to do something. So we get to the core of this. This is essential because consciousness is the state which produces action, though it does not inspire it. Wait, that, let's read that again. This is essential because consciousness is the state which produces action, though it does not inspire it. It does not inspire the action. Man is free to believe what he chooses. But what he does, like in your behavior, it attests to what he believes. What you do, say, comes from the place what you believe is essential for you. If you think that meditation is a good idea for you, you will do that. If you think, well, that's nothing for me, that's no, then you won't do it. So that's, that's what is meant here, for instance. Just as an example, I use meditation. The deeper levels of his con subconsciousness always contain the impulse to miracles. But he is free to fill its superficial levels, which are closer to the consciousness, with the impulses of this world and to identify himself with them. So it's like, okay, here is your consciousness. So it's like, a, like the cloud the consciousness cloud and close to this uh, consciousness in which you are aware of what what is going on what is what you are thinking very close to it are your superficial thoughts and ideas so you you can bring those in identify with it and do something with it in your mind in your consciousness in your conscious mind so and that is closer, that's very close to your, say, cloud, of where you find yourself, cloud of awareness. So he's free to fill its superficial levels, which are closer to consciousness, with the impulses of this world, and to identify himself with them. This 
results in denying himself access to the miracle level underneath. In conscious action then, his interpersonal relationships also become superficial and the miracle inspired relating becomes impossible. So yeah, you probably never heard this from A Course in Miracles. Um, so luckily we discovered this today. <laughs> so I'm going to do something with that. It's like, that's so great. I'm so happy to read this just to have an idea about how your mind works. So it's like you fill yourself with the daily buzz, the daily uh, distraction, so to speak. You fill it up with your ideas. You identify with them. You make a solid consciousness. Fill your consciousness with it. Here it says, it's like, you will have difficulty to to slide through, it's like to allow impulses, miracle impulses to come up um, from your subconscious into your awareness um, because of these superficial um, impulses and uh, yeah, distractions, so to speak. Then it will just not happen because you're so distracted, in fact, and not allowing the miracle impulses to come to you. So this is this is great to read this. Like that's why I continuously always say like slowing down, um, allowing your mind to expand, spaciousness, letting ideas go instead of doing something with it. Like that makes total sense when I share it like that. Uh, with what is written here. So here's an interesting expression too. Miracles are a way of earning release from fear. Revelation induces a state in which fear has already been abolished. Miracles are thus a means and revelations are an end. In this sense, they work together. So I skip a couple of uh, paragraphs and I go to 25e. Revelation is intensely personal and it is actually not translatable into conscious con uh, content at all. And this is what I was expressing too before we start reading the revelations. Um, Revelation 3. Revelation is intensely personal and is actually not translatable into conscious content at all. That is why any attempt to describe it in words is usually incomprehensible. It's absolutely not understandable. And my big heavy book here. And even to the writer himself at another time. Like if you would write down your revelation, if you would write down exactly what happened, then when you would read it again, it would be like, well, no, that was not really it at all. Like it's not expressible into words. This is why the book of Revelations is essentially incomprehensible. Revelation induces only experience. Miracles, on the other hand, induce interpersonal action. In the end, these are more useful because of their impersonal nature. Okay, so there's a lot of information here. Revelation induces only experience. So you keep it with that. Like you have a revelation of your inner connectedness, your deep love for God, so intensely personal, it's inexpressible. And you keep it like that. It's like the same what Joel would say too. It's like, it's a secret. It is a secret revelation. It is just for you. It is your subjective singular experience. That's what that is. It's like, it's just for you. Nobody needs to know anything about it. No, keep it for yourself. 
in that sense, like, keep it right there. Don't even try to think about it that much. It's like, no, it is just for you a gift. You know, it's a gift for you to remember your connectedness in such an intense personal way. So that that would take care of, um, so it would, would be more effective than to read a thousand books. Just this one revelation would do that. It's like it will bring you the certainty that you have been looking for. But like we said in the beginning, it's a temporary, say, uh, dissolving of fear and doubt. So does that mean that fear and doubt will come back again? Yeah, yeah, they will come back again. And that's all right, too. So this is just a temporary lift out of that. You experience intensely personal, the love of God. But you see, in the practice then, coming back to, okay, so how do you come to a revelation readiness? It is in fact then, by the training that we do, by the practice that we have, by your commitment to the 40-day awakening experience, um, you know, all this helps to come into, say, a revelation readiness. That means suddenly that can be that can happen to you in such a way that you yeah you can't explain but it's still possible so by continuously dedicating yourself to this and um, taking time to sink deeply into your consciousness like not being distracted by the superficial consciousness no letting that go for at least some time you know to to uh, give space for for other communication is in fact how we get ready to the revelation readiness so that's one thing so then the miracle miracle mindedness is is just a matter of awareness too and you see that in um, uh, in this so it is not um, I always come back to this but it's it's not under conscious control but it has to do with your readiness. So it's like you can make your mind ready, miracle mind ready. Um, we read about that here. Uh, so I'm continuing reading um, because it is so well, um, yeah, it works so well to read this for me. I love this. So in this phase of learning as we are, Working miracles is more valuable because freedom from fear cannot be thrust upon you. The experience cannot last. So it's it's important to to uh, work in these miracles because um, the freedom of fear is, is a process. Like it takes a, some time to come to that to the freedom of fear. It is not something that can just be like you switch it you turn a switch and and it's there so it's an it's an undoing miracles are the essential course of action for both of you they will strengthen him and stabilize you So I'm going to, oh yeah, here's uh, B26. So that's another miracle principle. Miracles praise God through men. They praise God through honoring, by honoring his creations, affirming their perfection. They heal because they deny body identification and affirm soul identification. By perceiving the spirit, they adjust the levels and see them in proper alignment. This places the spirit at the center, where souls can communicate directly. See, that was one of the ways of ex uh, expression of communication that I love to share. Miracles praise God through men. They praise God by honoring his creations and affirming their perfection. See, and this is this is an um, for us 
uh, the way that you want to be with your brother confirming his perfection not being critical not correcting not doing this or doing that no it's confirming the perfection like whatever you think about yourself this is not how i see you whatever you say think is not right about what you think is happening it's perfect it's, it's beautiful it's great it works so don't say this whole say superficial critical um, thinking uh, is just in the way for your mind to be open so this is what we call them coming into a miracle mindedness is to be able to to praise God through man by seeing the perfection in your brother not not by criticizing him not by doing anything else it's like no so that's where the forgiveness part comes in you see you allow yourself to see your brother as he is and not what you think about him not even because he's wearing a yellow shirt or not you know not any of that so it's like being free of any kind of judgment being open to see your brother you as who you are um, letting that come to you and say praising god for that instead of something else that you have been doing with your brother it's like something else is, is then being critical have, saying like well why do you do this and why do you do that and um, maybe even feelings of hate towards your brother feelings of this and that um, you name it all this so that's why uh, in order to come into a miracle mindedness or a readiness for miracles a purification first is necessary it's like that's what is said in the course too so when we when we read our miracle um say review for instance of the first 50 lessons or the fifth, uh, first seven lessons you see that this helps you to let go of ideas so it brings your mind in a different place when you do that and all of this is a preparation for um, say for miracle mindedness to to have moments with your brothers where you are not body identified anymore but spirit identified because then in spirit identification we can uh, we can communicate directly with one another so as long as you think and so to bring it really back to here so as long as you think that here's a body sitting talking to you uh, then you don't see me then you you are you have your consciousness filled with something else than spirit identification so if you look beyond the appearance so to speak you see right through this appearance and see like oh my god i i can connect here now and and have my say joint experience of communication with my brother i'm actually using this moment to to take another look at you and um, come to a praise to god for you so thank you for you thank god for you thank god for you you know so th and that that's like go deep into that yeah thank god for you it's like oh my god i, I can't believe it like i've been walking around i've been seeing you i thought i saw you but i actually saw you as a body or actually saw you as an entity walking on this earth coming from a certain country doing certain things having a certain age having a certain life having a certain whatever background like now i look straight through that i cannot identify any longer with with the characteristics of my perception i don't want to do that i don't want to recognize you as a body but I want to connect directly with you as a soul, as, as like with your spirit. So that it is a spiritual program, right? It is not 
um, <laughs> an, an judgment program or an body identification program. It's like, no, actually, everything is, um, say, made ready to come into spirit identification. And that's why you come here. That's why you, because that is really the new experience of yourself that you are developing in yourself with, with great help. So yeah, love your brother as yourself becomes then see your brother as he really is. That is how you love him. Uh, it's not about what this body did to you or what that body did to you. No, it's about recognizing that we're one because we're, there's only one spirit in that sense. And that is that is you. Check time. Oh my God, time flies. That's great. Miracles praise God through men. They praise God by honoring his creations, affirming their perfection. They heal because they deny body identification and affirm soul identification. By perceiving the spirit, they adjust the levels and see them in proper alignment. This places the spirit at the center where souls can communicate directly. Miracles should inspire gratitude, not awe. Man should thank God for what he really is. The children of God are very holy. The miracle honors their holiness. So I'll, I will stop right here, just not to overload, but it's like, wow, this just continues. You know, it's like, this is this is another couple of paragraphs further and look at that like so much is revealed here to us in this um, it's like so essential to hear this you all have to say know how this works for you and recognize the parts in your mind where this is connected to in order for you to have an experience that will set you free of your ideas that you had before, you know, to come into the freedom of loving your brother as he really is without any reservation, but just by seeing him as he really is and not confusing him with the body appearance that you might see. So there's, there's a lot of work to do. You can see that too. Maybe you recognize that too. It's like, wow, that's, yeah, that's still something that I have to actively learn to do and by by reminding myself that it is so. So that, yeah, you have time for that. So practice it. It doesn't need to be perfect immediately or it, it will show the perfection of your brother at a certain point automatically. And then you see, oh my God, I'm so happy that I've actually nothing to do with this it really came to me because everything that I try to do with my mind, with my conscious mind, is then uh, in fact in the way of receiving it. Mm -hmm. So I can actually say like I had nothing to do with it and really came to me. I recognize in you the perfection of God and, and I have nothing, is, it is a recognition. So that's, that's so great. So I hope this makes sense to you too and you start to recognize certain parts in it and um, see the loveliness of the practice of this is it's like this, this can only be experienced in defenselessness if you stop def defending yourself, if you stop identifying yourself with, with your physicality, if you, you know, all these things like their prerequisites for the, for the, uh, experience of the miracle of the healing that can take place by shifting your awareness from body to soul uh, awareness so beautiful souls thank you so much for uh, being here and um, it's great to uh, sit with you and go through this and there will be more because uh, we're not done at all so 
we need a lot of practice and that's why we have each other that's why we meet each other that's why we have every opportunity to to get to the bottom of it so i'm so happy to to do that with you and um, so thank you for that and um, see you soon thank you Thank you.